I don't know if you noticed, but I'm pretty much building this van all by myself. And I think this is going to be a two-man job. It'd definitely be a two-man job if it drops off the van. But let's find out. Today's video is all about doors basically. I've got four doors to make up, three of which are going to need insulating and covering with the lever at material. So that's the cargo door and he's insulating and covering with the lever at material. The cab door also will have to be insulated and the back end will have to be covered in the lever at material. I've also got the door underneath the bed itself. Now that's going to have to be insulated like the rest of the doors I just mentioned. And the ongoing saga with the shower door. Yes, I'm still on with that. Hopefully I can get that in today and fit it and work it. I'll buy folding doors. Did in the end actually manage to make a new pair up after I smashed the opaque PVC glass in there. I just replaced it with the white PVC plastic I bought off eBay. It took me 10 attempts because the glue wasn't strong enough to hold this plastic PVC in its channels but I managed to find some glue that's strong enough and uh, it seems to be holding its, uh, its own way now so that do me nicely. So I'll fit this now. So it's just a case of sliding it into its mounting channel here and I'm just placing four screws into it so it's fixed into position. Hey, so it's taken me 10 attempts to try and fit this bloody thing like it, but it's working. Shower door in place. Start now painting the inside of that door. So I'm working quite quickly with this stuff because it's quite warm today and it soon goes off. And it looks like it's going to rain, so I don't want to be getting this paint wet. wet. So I've now finished off painting around the edge of the framework. Now, I'm ready for preparations to do the plywood lining on the door itself. Now we'll do it in three sections. One section here, one here, and one large one up the top. Now I've done it like that so I can gain access to any locks, linkages or mechanisms for the door itself. So I've just done a rough cutout for the bottom panel on the left hand side. And I'm just tidying up the edges where I can really trim off a bit more just so it flows better with the door itself. So I'm going to be second piece of plywood here at the bottom of the door and like I said I'm going to do it in two halves so if I need to work on this half of the lock I can just take one panel off or if I need to work on that side of the lock just take that bottom panel off. It's, it's going to be so much easier for any type of future maintenance I need to do on the door itself. Now right here I have my door handle so I'm just going to trace around the handle itself because that's where it's going to be fitted. I want to trace around it and cut that out and hopefully it should match. So I've now cut out the panels for the door and the next bit will definitely give me some thumbs down which is a good thing. Now I have tried to contain this carnage in here by using silver foil tape and avoiding lock and lock mechanisms. Now I have tried to use closed cell expandable foam. Now the problem is when you cut it off, 
even if it's 24 hours there's still stuff in there curing so if you do find some more stuff just let it cure it, it's not the best thing to use I know and it does leave some large voids in there but at least some insulation is better than no insulation in my opinion yes I know there's some drain holes at the bottom I've been watching at the bottom of this for the past six months there's been never any water connected in there and the top holes are blocked up by the manufacturers anyway so it's been pretty much dry in there so this is why I went down this route so about six months ago around about Christmas time I did the same top in this void now there's four holes and all I did each night over four nights I sprayed the expandable foam in one hole at a time and let it do its business then on the second night went to the second hole third hole third night and the fourth hole fourth night then I just let it expand do its job and cut off the excess so yeah it's gonna be a pain in the ass to insulate this door because you've got your door locks your central locking door handle and this linkage here now at a certain key points I have put some insulation in there and it's not fouling against it now in the mid sections I'm going to use my insulation board and put it behind the door linkage there and same at the bottom I'm going to put the insulation board behind all the wiring there's not much going on down here it's all in the mid section and the linkage runs all the way up there as well and there's no insulation in that part I just do not want to be putting foam in there because it will end up bugging the box. See, that's all I'm using. Now, I'm place the board in there. I'll just square a very small amount in the cracks. So whilst the expandable foam is drying out on the bottom half of the door, I've actually made the top half, the cover for the top half of the door. I've already used my leverette and covered it. On the back, I've already used the vapour barrier. So I'm going to do this backwards. Now, to seal that vapour barrier off, I'm going to use this stuff, non-dry embedding sealant. I'm just going to use the sealant right around the edge of the door itself. So I've just applied the sealant on the door card itself. I just think it's going to be less messy and I can easily judge around the corners and the edges of this card. <laughs> There you go, that's the top panel up and in position. Close this window before the rain gets in. As the cargo door is hanging off its hinges, I think now is a good time to fit the blind itself. And on this blind, we have a fly net and a black hole blind. That's all just extend that fully so we lock into place because these legs do pop up in place. And just with six screws, two at the bottom, one at the top, and that ring, that's the blind fitted. Excellent. So I've cut down my expandable foam, and like I said before, the issues with expandable foam or using it is it does have huge voids in it. And when you cut it down, it's still wet inside, so leave that to dry for another day. Now I've made sure that my door lock is still working and nothing is following the linkage itself. So that's all working still. The cables on the outside of the board so I can gain access to those. The ones down there. So if I do need to go in there for future maintenance, everything's going to be easy to get to. So I've just quickly taped over this door frame with a bit of aluminium tape and left the door linkage free so I can gain access to it if I need to do any maintenance repairs to the door latch system itself. So this bit around the central locking mechanism 
there's not much I could do regarding insulation. I've done it the best I can. I've got a bit of the back and surrounding sides. Obviously not too much in there because obviously that's where the door lock is and the latching mechanisms. All I'm going to do is put some reflectives over that piece, hole there, and use aluminium tape. So I'm just going through my bottom door again, making sure the panel lines up and everything's okay. And the one thing I did forget was my door stop. I want to make sure that's in place because I do not want to see this dog bugger off into next week. So I've just made a oval there so it's just nice and adjustable. And also there's two bolt holes here as well. It's going to be uh, left exposed for the end runner for the other side of the door. So that's the locking mechanism all sealed up. If I do need to go back in there I'll just get a standing knife and cut it open. I need to do any maintenance work on it. So the next thing I want to be getting on with is fitting the store card on. Making sure these checker patterns are going to roughly line up. I'm going to fix on the next piece which is just here and hopefully that should line up. If she does up top, running down a little bit out. Anyway, I screw this into position and then I can get the door back into its uh, hanging position. So that's me in the door. I'll cover up now with this leverette. I've also made sure it all matches up top. Made sure I've provided the hole for the end roller of the door. And also I've done the end stock as well. Make sure I put that back into position. So all that's left to do now is to basically close the door and rehang it. I've got more rubber bung. So now the door is hanging on the back end of it, I'm going to have to lift it up, get inside and do the bolts. So in here are the two bolt holes for the back end runner that runs along the side of the van. Just going to make sure they're tight. Now I've got it all supported underneath. And yep, that's tight. So that should be good to go. That should be able to open up okay. Just making sure the rubber around this door card isn't falling against the door card itself and it is making connection to the van door itself and that seems to be perfect. It's doing its job. Great. So just test my locks, make sure they're working. So that's locked. That's open. Right. See? Everything's 
traffic does oh, just miss the bodywork of the van. I don't like you like you